This video describes the airport airspace evaluation process used by the Office of Airports at the Federal Aviation Administration. This video also describes best practices to avoid adverse impacts of proposed construction to airport operations, capacity, and safety. For additional information on airport airspace protection, refer to the resources at the end of this video. We recommend viewing all airport airspace protection videos on this website. See www.fa.gov. Images in this video are graphical representations only and are not to scale. This video focuses on off-airport development. Structures and development near an airport can adversely affect the airport's capacity, operations, and safety. Proactive coordination of proposed development plans with the FAA in a timely manner prior to construction will minimize adverse impacts to the airport, commerce, travel, and local communities. When the location and height of a proposed construction project is known, it is crucial for a proponent to determine if a submission is required. The FAA Notice Criteria tool, located on the OEAAA website, provides a means to do this. Scan the QR code to access the website. When proponents of your project begin their planning, they inform the FAA of their plans by completing and submitting the FAA's Form 7460-1, Notice of Proposed Construction or Alteration. This initiates the FAA's review process outlined here. File the FAA Form 7460-1 as early as possible in the preliminary stages of the project when the location and height of the proposed structure are known. FAA Form 7460-1 is located on the FAA's Obstruction Evaluation slash Airport Airspace Analysis OEAAA website at oeaa.faa.gov. Completing the form requires entering all proponent contact information, the precise project location and its description, whether it is new construction or an alteration to an existing structure, identification of the permanence, type, and the marking and lighting of the proposed structure, the construction schedule, and the complete description of the proposal. Additionally, including a sketch or drawing with your submission will assist the FAA in assessing your proposal and may help expedite the review process. The FAA's assessment is based solely on the information provided in this form. Any changes to the proposed height or location will invalidate the aeronautical study and the proponent would need to file a new case. The jurisdictional authority to limit building and structure heights through the construction permit process rests with local government authorities and not with the FAA. The FAA's role is to determine the effect on the safe and efficient use of navigable airspace. The local authorities, the FAA, and the airport sponsor are all responsible for working together to protect the airspace vital for safe airport operations. The proponent collects accurate data for the location and height of the structure and then submits FAA Form 7460-1. The FAA then conducts an initial review of the submission. See the Airport Airspace Protection video to learn about some of the airport protection surfaces that are considered in the initial review. If the proposed structure exceeds the FAA's height limits, it is presumed to be a hazard to air navigation. The FAA will then engage with the proponent to address and resolve any potential aeronautical impacts. It is beneficial for the proponent to arrange a meeting with the airport, local government, and the FAA to explore ideas and alternatives. These meetings foster transparency, build trust, and help address potential conflicts early in the process. In this example, the building's height interferes with the necessary airspace needed to ensure flight safety, as discussed in the Airport Airspace Protection video. If the proponent agrees to lower the height, the FAA issues a determination of no hazard. The proponent may proceed with their revised plan. However, if the proponent does not accept any of the proposed mitigations, the FAA then performs a detailed aeronautical study to assess whether the presumed hazard is a hazard to air navigation. The detailed FAA study analyzes potential impacts to airport capacity, safety, and utility which includes impacts to takeoff and landing operations. If the FAA's aeronautical study determines the presumed hazard is not a hazard, the FAA issues a determination of no hazard. Marking and lighting of the proposed structure may still be required.
advise you circular 70-7460-1, Obstruction Marking and Lighting, describes the FAA standards for marking and lighting obstructions. However, if the FAA's aeronautical study confirms the proposed structure poses a substantial aeronautical impact, the FAA issues a hazard determination to the proponent. See the Airport Airspace Case Study video in the Airport Design Technical video series for examples of impacts that these hazards may cause to an airport. Protecting airport airspace is complex and requires proactive communication and partnership between all key stakeholders to identify potential impacts to airport airspace. Following best practices leads to mutually beneficial outcomes for airports, proponents, and local communities. Each stakeholder plays a role in ensuring a successful outcome. Best practices for the proponent include Submitting FAA Form 7460-1 notification to the FAA early in the planning process Participating in meetings with the FAA, airport operator, and local zoning officials Understanding the impacts their proposal may have on the airport And willingness to discuss and compromise Best practices for the local and state government officials include Understanding the FAA's notification criteria Collaborating with local airport management and the FAA Understanding the significant impacts on airport operations and the local community And incorporating airspace protection criteria in local height zoning and building permitting Best practices for airport management include Understanding your airport's airspace protection needs Collaborating regarding local height zoning and airspace regulations Communicating to local government officials and proponents Providing ongoing communication with local municipalities And communicating with airport users With proper planning and collaboration with the FAA, proponents can develop within the surrounding land areas while minimizing negative impacts to airport operations, capacity, and safety this practice allows for economic development, which benefits local communities while preserving long-term airport capacity and flexibility. The detailed steps in the FAA Obstruction Evaluation Process are on the OEAAA website at oeaa.faa.gov. Form 7460-2 is a supplemental notice to the FAA for reporting project status such as the start of construction, project abandonment, or as-built conditions among other items. These reference materials provide additional guidance on airport airspace protection. Visit www.fa.gov to find related documents, videos, and tools. Please contact your FAA regional or district office to address any issues, concerns, or questions related to airspace protection. The FAA appreciates your interest. Safe flying!